Hi, everybody. This is Alan Fine. I'm here with Virginia Irarita, who's the founder, executive partner of Made for Spain in Portugal. It's a luxury destination management company. Uh, I recently was hosted by her in Barcelona and uh, Barcelona is coming back. But uh, maybe she'll give us a preview of some other hotspots in Spain and Portugal here on Insider Travel Report. Virginia, thank you for talking to us. Thank you. Very happy and honored to be here. And it's just an irony that uh, it, it, we were coming out of COVID in August and uh, you hosted James uh, Schilling on my partner in Madrid and you were face to face and you were talking about how great it is. We don't have to use Zoom and look at here. What's wrong with this picture? It was great because we were together. And last year, they, you know, being able to touch somebody, we are, we are from Southern Europe. We touch people. We touch people. <laughs> so COVID was like very much not us. Yeah, so, um, so right it now, to with James. It, it, we're, unfortunately, time made it so that we can't touch. But uh, Barcelona is alive. It's vibrant. It's uh, it's it's youthful. It's a college town with the co you know. Um, it, it was really buzzing and happening. And I, I want to talk about it and also sing your praises because you're a company that's known for showing Spain and Portugal uh, for what it really is uh, with, with luxury. And that's exactly what we experienced. Can you please start to tell us what you planned? Oh, we, we wanted to share with you Barcelona, but we, uh, you know, it was very exciting because we saw you very excited and happy with Gaudi and modernism. And you had this spot with other spots. So it was, it was very exciting for us uh, to be able to, you know, to take you around. Well, the the other thing that's a, a minor issue, but uh, the I was traveling with my wife who had some mobility issues, and that didn't stop this tour one bit, uh, because you had for us a Mercedes with a driver and a not just a guide, an art historian. Um, I think his name is uh, Carlos uh, uh, Roig. Right, and. Uh, he was just terrific. And we began starting off going around the Gothic older parts of the city. Uh, you want to talk about that a little bit? Uh, well, Barcelona is uh, like everybody speaks about Gaudi and modernism, but it's a very old city. It's, uh, you know, very attached to the sea with a big, big historical quarters. Uh, and it's, you know, wonderful to, to walk around with all these alleys, the, with all these Gothic churches, Romanesque, and surprise after surprise, the small shop, the, the, the artisan, the, the, you know, very hip, new modern, all together, <laughs> women. Well, well, we saw um, uh, Santa Maria del Mar, that, that church, uh, and then we saw the um, the Elborn Market, which is uh, the the center of the culture, uh, with the excavation. So he was he was saying right underneath here was another city, yeah, uh, which which you don't think about. Um, and then uh, it was just massive. He, he said not just where this market was, but extending all the way out underneath. If they continued to excavate, he said there would be more. And it's very special. There's something you said. That is very special. The Sagrada Familia Church is being built only with money given by the visitors, by the people that goes there to, to pray or the visitors that pay for the ticket. It's not official money. There is people putting money to build it. So it was the same with Santa Maria del Mar. They were the fishermen donating money to build it. So when we, when we approached uh, La Sagrada Familia, he made sure that he, he said... This is the way Gaudi wanted you to see it coming out of the trees. And, and it's, it's way off and there it is. And then as you get closer, it, your impressions continue to change. Um, talk about that a little bit, please. Well, for Gaudi, everything was and began with nature, with God creating nature. So he uh, designed in a way that it, that it was according to nature. So they were not straight lines. They were every curve, things going down, hanging. So it was the same principles. So it makes sense when he said, you know, he wants you to see it this way. <laughs> and, and so you have to talk about the curves. When you get inside, there's the forest. You know, you, you get the feeling of the forest and there's the fruit 
There's also fruit outside. Um, and the other thing, and I know that you planned this on purpose, the light. Gaudi would build and he would think about light. And the, uh, the guide showed us, this is an early stained glass. The light's coming in. It's coming in, it's colored, but look at this. And he talked about how Gaudi would tip things and make light slide and glide. And boy, did it ever. And they dance, you're in there, and they, 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 the colors dance around you, surrounding you. It's magical. It, and it's very special that everybody thinks the Sagrada Familia is a, is a cathedral. So it's the same as Santa Maria del Mar. It's by the cathedral nearby, but it's not the cathedral. Uh, it's the same here. It's a church from a neighborhood that commanded the, the church to Gaudi. So it's fabulous. That's why but, 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 but it intends to be the tallest church and it's going to have 18 spires instead of what it has now. So we then went, uh, actually, I, there's more to talk about in the cathedral, the, the, um, the spiral staircases and the, um, where the Eucharist is done, where uh, there's, uh, and then we also saw the crypt as you could look down and there's a, a little area and we saw Gaudi's actual um, uh, burial spot. Very moving. Uh, so did you, were you able to visit uh, other uh, 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 buildings by other uh, modernist architects? Yes, well, we, we went to the, uh, the, the Avenue of Disagreements. <laughs> Paseo de Gracia, Avenue of the Discordia. Well, that was the enlargement of the city. So in the time of the modernists, in the time of Gaudi, so, you know, I'm very wealthy. I made all this money, have these factories. I'm having a great building by Gaudi. So then the other one, no, I'm having more money and I'm doing a better building. And so it was like a competition in every corner. So that's why they call it. But it's fun because you have different architects. Oh, either different architects side by side with Gaudi's just standing out, just <laughs> <laughs> with, with, with like carnival masks for, for balconies. It was really yeah, fun. Yeah, that's good. And dragons. You know, Gaudi is always signed his buildings with a dragon, 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 a dragon, dragon. We also saw um, Casa Mia or Casa, Casa Mila. 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 Casa Mila. Tell us about that one, because it was very different. It, it had um, raw <clears throat> iron from ships that was salvaged because we learned that, you know, art doesn't necessarily come from expensive items. It can come from anything Gaudi said. Tell us a little more about that. Well, uh, it is the house that uh, Mr. Uh, Mila commanded Gaudi to build for his family. So it was in the, that same avenue, you know, to show off. And it's a great building. They call it La Pedrera because it's made out of stone and reminds you of the mountains of Montserrat oh. uh, with all those stones. And they were apartments. Now, you know, it's gone, but it was the family living there. But it's fun because the family was living, the Mila family was living outside of Barcelona and moved to Barcelona to that building. And now most of them, they sold and they are back. <laughs> In the same place. I heard that there are two um, elderly women who still live there. Otherwise, it's businesses and yes. other things. Yes. And it's like a tiny bit of it, maybe a 2% of the building. Is but it? but that, that, those balconies are remarkable. Uh, but everything he does is, is organic. It feels like of the earth. Uh, the other thing I wanted to say about the tour was it was wealth. It was so, it was so welcoming. And the driver was great. Obviously, the guide was great, and there was no waiting. Everything was planned to the T. And right. in, in my case, my wife needed a, a, a wheelchair temporarily, and there it was uh, for our youth. Nothing, nothing will stop us. If somebody is on a wheelchair, we can even take them on a you know, hot air ballooning on a wheelchair. I mean, we have great products for people with difficulties working. And, and, you know, my mother ended up on a wheelchair. I, you know, I broke my knee and I was walking. On. So, you know. But it really, it, it, I, I, we came away feeling like we saw what we would have seen anyway if my wife didn't have the uh, problem with her foot. So we thank yeah. you for that. Yeah. It was a definite and, and, and also it's good to have a guide. The guide makes the stone speak. And we need the stones to speak because otherwise we kind of get it, but we don't get it. <laughs> but not only that, we went into the uh, Picasso Museum and he made that speak. Now, of course, we all know he supposedly painted well and then he worked his way to painting simply. But I had no idea how well he painted by the age of 15, which is a segue because we saw a painting in there 
that was painted in our hotel. Yeah, in Serras. <laughs> right. right. That's a so, special place, huh? That's uh, a special hotel. Yeah, so, so I want to segue to the hotel. But that painting was amazing. I mean, Picasso's paintings, uh, they were, you could see his influence, all the masters, as he was a child. And well, Picasso was born in Malaga. He's from Andalusia. And the, the father was a school teacher that was moved to uh, Galicia, to Coruña, when he was like eight, around that age, and then moved to Barcelona. So by the time he was in Barcelona, he was a young teenager. And, you know, with all the uh, great knowledge of all the classics, he was fabulous. I mean, we were, we've been very blessed. We had Dali and Gaudi and Picasso. It was a moment, Lorca, Falla, you know, the musicians, all that beginning the, the, the three decades of the first uh, of the 20th century in Spain was a boom. I'm glad you brought that up. That, that's definitely a, a reason to travel and visit and to seek out uh, your, your, your hobbies, your, your loves, music, food. Uh, yeah. But now I want to talk about the, the Sarah's Hotel. Mm -hmm. So you picked out this little gem, this little luxury hotel, and it was terrific. First of all, um, You'll see later in the week, uh, we're going to have an interview with Anthony Bougnon, who's the managing director and co-founder. Uh, he took us for a tour of it, of the, of the hotel. And uh, the amenities, for example, uh, every room has a phone in it for international calling to be used as the guest pleases. A very nice touch. Uh, breakfast. They have a breakfast buffet. That was great. We had um, also the rooftop, the view of the marina uh, and to be able to the, the restaurant uh, in Formal, uh, which has a Michelin star chef, uh, Mark uh, Gascons, uh, that's usually downstairs. But when the nights are beautiful, we got to eat upstairs on the rooftop. It yeah. was great. Yeah. And it's, it's a small gem. It's, it's a small, if it, it's very personal hotel. They take it personally. They, it's like if you were going to stay in their home and you know, you, of course, you can use the telephone. Of course, you can use the minibar. It's, it's that approach. It's personal. They, they, they take it personally. And I love that. I love and, that. And, and also, I love something that is, that is in front of the water. We forget that sometimes that Barcelona is right on the water. And it's, it's amazing. The, the thing is that the old cities, in the old times, the water was for the fishermen, for the poor people. So usually, we don't have places, uh, cities with overlooking the, the water. In Spain, we have San Sebastian because it was revealed at the end of the uh, 19th century uh, when the, the beaches were in fashion <laughs> again. But uh, Barcelona, you, you have the opportunity to be there, seeing the ships, seeing the boats. It's right there. The water is right there. And it's, I think it's, 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 you put your feet in the ground. You, you know where you are. Well, that's why we thank you for the choice of the of the Sarah's Hotel. I mean, that's we were great. able to, with the wheelchair, we were able to walk the entire uh, harbor. And oh. we also were able to walk to a park, a major park, uh, within yeah. 15 minutes. And then okay. as we came back, we went through Old Town again. And I got to say, Friday and Saturday night was hopping. Live music, entertainment, all the restaurants, everyone out uh, 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 on foot. It was really great to feel Aren't we happy to be back again traveling and going outside without the face covered and breathing? <laughs> it's, it's amazing. You feel it in the streets. Everybody's like out there just enjoying. And then there's one more thing I wanted to say about the hotel. Um, they pride themselves on the food. Uh, well, so they should. I, I want to make they sure should. to show it's some of the local, plates. Everything very local and top quality. I mean, that breakfast buffet you were saying, small. But everything is like, wow. <laughs> and their drinks, the cocktails that they've created. Uh, one, one was called the exotic colada. It's a passion fruit pina colada. Uh, very, very thoughtful. And they do with alcohol and without alcohol. So <laughs> yes, they they friendly they with do. everybody. They, do. Like, they take it personal. <laughs> I know. I, 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 I don't want to make sure that, to give our uh, accolades and to give them a shout out. But now... Uh, when you travel Spain, you can't just see one city. You need to see the contrasts. So let's start talking about what are the other hot cities right now? Oh, we have two very hot cities now. We have Madrid with uh, many new properties. Uh, 
the reeds just uh, redone, converted into a Mandarin Oriental. We have a Four Seasons, we have a Rosewood, and we have a brand new edition hotel. Amazing design. So Madrid is really booming. And also part of the city has been declared World Heritage Site by the UNESCO. So, you know, covering the Botanical Garden, the Prado Museum is fascinating. And Sevilla is booming. Last week we had the, in Sevilla, the, the, it was a big, big uh, show on the new collection of Christian Dior in the Plaza de España, where it was amazing with, you know, showcasing all the artisans. You know, we, we are in, in all Europe and of course we have history and art, but we have fabulous artisans in Europe and the top quality, top, top quality. It's not like things doing in, in the far west, you know, like Massive is everything by hand. So, you know, we really love sharing this with travelers. So post-COVID now, bookings are coming in? Bookings are coming in. We are very busy. We are getting all of us in Europe more requests that we can handle for people willing to travel. But the thing is that everybody is so very busy and everything is much slower than, you know, uh, people helping with the luggage. Uh, oh, the company is not working anymore. It's a new company. The new company doesn't work well. It's like everything we have to check and recheck and control and control again. So everything takes a lot. So it's not, it's not the way it always was. You always you have to travel. Is, is not as easy as it used to be. And all you have to do is just looking at the news and you see the, you know, yesterday was like a his row full of luggage. They lost and, the, you know, there are lines to go through customs everywhere. It's like crazy. And, but we see the same airlines cutting play, flights. And uh, I see in the U.S. also a lack of uh, waiters. It's like, it's a different world. We pretend, but it's a different, it's, a, it's, 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 it's a, an amazing world because we are out there. But uh, so, so we're not uh, back. It's the, the, that I hate that new normal. It's the, you have to verify it. I hate that too. But now did the, the ending of the U S reentry testing show uh, uh, a bump in, in, in sales? Or, or, we, we, we have seen an increase and we are seen as low also. We are seen as low. I think uh, now people is uh, hearing about crisis, economy. We so are, a little, we are like overwhelmed. One day a million requests and then the next day like nothing. It's like crazy. I don't know. I I I guess you know it's it's, it's going to be very uneven. But we don't see the future as happy as we were seeing the future a couple of months ago uh, or before February. Okay. Well, thank you for your honesty on that. Let's talk a little bit about the history of your company. How long is it? When did you start it? Uh, how did you grow it? Because I basically I want to get travel advisors to start to work with you if they haven't and if they have to continue. Well, I was uh, working in Citibank for a million years, like 18 <laughs> years, and bored to death. I didn't know what I was doing to my life because, you know, all I cared for was like art, history, literature, and but I spent my days doing nothing to do with that. So I, I saw there was an opportunity because we in, in Spain speak in tourism. So a lot of travelers come, uh, but, you know, and 22 years, 23 years ago, I was seeing that we were like selling whatever to whoever wanted to come. And I wanted to have a company that was on the traveler side. So what do you like? What do you enjoy? And to, you know, to put the best of Portugal, Spain to the service of that person. So that is how we began. And because we, you know, after a you know, few months, I asked one of my best friends to join me. Uh, I'm a social animal. So... I'm in charge of creating the product and selling. Alonso, my business partner, is the one, you know, doing the magic, running the, the show, <laughs> the operations. And, uh, you know, it's working very, very well uh, and many happy clients. And we still, every time we finalize an itinerary, it's like, I hope they enjoy it, you know. Uh, it's, it's holidays. I was in City Bank thinking I was taking care of the most important part in life, that was money. But, you know, that time with your mother, with your daughter, with your wife, being able to see her, you know, do a normal itinerary, even on a wheelchair, it's priceless, right? So it really is. You know, we, we, we think now we are doing important stuff. <laughs> we think so. And the idea also is to open doors for travelers. Uh, there are many other things that can be done that travelers usually don't do, or we have access to people, places, 
It's a lot about the people when, when you travel. Listen to you as you were explaining. The driver was very friendly. The guy was great. It's the people. Well, you must have a, a, a huge roster of really you know, good people and that you keep close. And that's yeah, what it feels right. like. We are a big family. A big family. So how can travel advisors work with you? Go to the URL, uh, madeforspainandportugal.com? Yeah. Uh, have a look at around the website. We mainly work through travel agents. Uh, and, you know, that's the idea, to, to, to learn from, you know, from you, to learn from the traveler, to be able to design the best, the ultimate travel experience. And since we go out to over 100,000 travel advisors every day, um, do, what's your advice to travel advisors at this time? Well, uh, my first thing will be the more we know, the better. Because the more about, we about know the about client. the client, yeah, the more we know about the client, the better we can help you. I can vouch uh, for that. Eh? I can vouch for that. <laughs> you, you knew my, yeah. my needs and you took care of them. Yeah, the more we know, the better. So that will be key. We are partners, we are together. And we are the bridge. The traveling is the bridge between the traveler and us, the destination. So uh, it has to be teamwork. Let's do it together. And that's the way, you know, the traveling will shine. And, you know, the traveler will enjoy and remember forever because, you know, holidays are important. Well, I have to thank you. Bottom of my heart, you put together the perfect trip, bucket list trip. I have the video to prove it. As everyone is seeing, I'll be showing it here on our video, also on the Saris Hotel video. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and good thank luck. Thank you, Alan. And I, I, I hope your wife returns to Spain. Oh, she can't wait. <laughs> she's usually a five to eight mile walker. So she says... Uh, She'll get a little better. On come back. We got to come back. Thank you. And thank you so much. Stay well. Thank you. And this is Alan Fine for Insider Travel Report.